Good morning, folks. We've got a number of potentially eruptive features on the sun, but they are staying quiet this morning. We'll check them out, as well as weather and 12 top science stories, starting at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last day on our star, once again, very quiet as we're in sunspot minimum. The bright, formerly active region turns to center disk. It retains no sunspots, but the thick, long, dark, coherent structures are the plasma filaments, each capable of erupting in spectacular fashion, but thus far, no such instability has been recognizable. The solar wind stream at Earth is very calm. Density, speed, and plasma temperature, all within normal range. Geospace is quiet this morning. Weather news. That's a tornado that dropped in Alamogordo, New Mexico. The initiation of the storms yesterday drove massive hail and continued the flash flooding in the central states. Italy got whacked with hail as well. This is southern Italy looking a bit like a winter wonderland here in early June. An interesting hypothesis out of Michigan is going to get a chance to be tested. The Alphen point in the corona, where the waves slow beyond the solar wind speed and potentially trap magnetic waves, causing the coronal heating. I just want to say magnetic plasma would be a fantastic explanation for the temperature in the corona. An interesting paper out about Snowball Earth is up next. For those familiar with the primary mode of this planet, which is glacial, not what we have now, this is a neat little investigation, linked below. Up next, a paper that claims to cover the multiphysics of earthquakes. They look at the thermo, hydro, mechanico, chemical processes at work. Pretty much everything except electromagnetism. Hmm. Well, there is a reason that the American Geophysical Union published pre-earthquake processes last year. It's mostly about electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes. Also the reason the Seismo Electromagnetic Satellite was launched by China and Italy. It's how we predict earthquakes over at QuakeWatch.net along with some of you. You can head over there and learn how to predict earthquakes electromagnetically in less than a day. I imagine some of you have heard that we have hit record atmospheric levels of CO2. Well, since their time of measurement, sure. However, this planet has seen more during the era of the dinosaurs and way more back towards the Cambrian period. It's how life explodes on this planet. Plant food. Up next, a real climate change story and an explanation for how cosmic rays trigger lightning and examining how lightning initiates in the clouds. It is electron avalanches cutting through different volumes of the cloud that begins the lightning initiation. One of the best ways to get that is from cosmic rays. Dozens of studies showing that when these cascades of electrons and neutrons break out, it triggers lightning. And now we know why. Boom. We're seeing test firing of Vega. ESA's space future is largely riding on their bet that they can transport to space safely, efficiently, and cost-effectively. Their multi-component system is like the Space Titanic for smaller missions, ones they hope will allow for a scientifically and financially rewarding future. Sadly, some of those missions will undoubtedly be searching for dark matter. Here this morning we find not only yet another silly super heavy dark matter particle idea, one that is the size of a hundred million protons, but it thermally reacts with baryonic matter, which pretty much rules out the known candidates for dark matter since they do not interact well. On the opposite end of the scale, we find a similar silliness, but at least within an appropriate mass range. The interaction profile here is hard to buy, though. If it is an electromagnetic particle, it's not only not dark matter, but we'd be seeing it already. How about some real cosmology to close here? First, we are looking at galaxies, spin, and the cosmic web. This is a confirmation paper regarding the position, angle, and spin of galaxies either being perpendicular to the walls of the cosmic filaments or parallel with them. This is not something gravity is capable of, especially when the populations can be divided by their size and whether they are embedded in the filaments or just astride. That is right-hand rule of electromagnetism stuff there. Up next, covert matter, dusty plasma. We already know it hides electric currents and ions, and today we learn it might be good enough at it to account for the missing oxygen population in the interstellar region of the galaxy. But it can hide more than electric currents plasma, and elements, apparently. It can hide entire galaxies. Folks, it is one thing that we are still discovering normal matter, plasma, and dust. But to find dust hiding entire galaxies is way too much of a stretch when you remember that they claim to know and see it all decades ago when they invented dark matter. Since then, they've been 100% wrong on both accounts. Not only are they finding more normal matter, but it comes in filaments, sheets, disks, and torus jet setups plasma electric. There's a reason the universe is looking like an interconnected nervous system. 
We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.